The Medals of Thomas Crystal, 79th Highlanders. Thomas Crystal of the Cameron Highlanders served in the expedition to Denmark in 1807, in Spain in 1808, including the retreat to Corona, at Walcheren, and then in Wellington's campaigns across Portugal and Spain, before marching into France and participating in the Battle of Toulouse. He also served in the Hundred Days campaign. In a letter from that time, Captain John Sinclair wrote to Betsy in Thurso. Ghent, 28th of May, 1815. My dear sister, I have just arrived here and we march for Brussels in an hour. Everything is hurry and confusion. Nothing but soldiers to be seen in this fine country. We are told the army is in motion for the frontiers of France, but of this you will know more than I do when you see the newspapers. I have not time to write more, but to request you will let William and all my friends know I am well. I will write the moment I have to spare to William. Your affectionate John Sinclair, Captain. Next month, Lieutenant Forbes of the 79th wrote about their approach march to the initial clash at Quatre Bras. As we proceeded on our march under an excess of heat and dust through Genappe to Quatre Bras, we met on the road a wounded Belgian soldier. Quatre Bras is a hamlet or farm seven leagues from Brussels, consisting of a few scattered houses, deriving its name from the intersection here. Crystal was then serving in Number 7 Company under Captain John Campbell. The 79th became Wellington's left-hand regiment as the brigade marched down the Namur Road at Quatre Bras, and would be involved in a hard day's fighting on the left flank, suffering significant casualties in both killed and wounded. These casualties would be added to at Waterloo. In The Waterloo Roll Call, Dalton writes, on the evening of the 18th of June, 1815, nine officers, 21 sergeants, seven drummers and 260 rank and file remained unwounded out of a total of 41 combatant officers, 40 sergeants, 11 drummers and 684 rank and file. The effective strength of the regiment at Quatre Bras. Thomas was born in the parish of St Cuthbert, Edinburgh, in 1787. He enlisted in Glasgow on the 25th of June 1805, aged 18, and was discharged as being worn out on the 24th of February 1819. He also received two years of pensionable service, having fought in the Waterloo campaign. This gave him a pensionable service of 15 years and 245 days, which resulted in a daily pension of one shilling and a half pence. His attestation and discharge document tells us a significant amount about the man. Here's a description. To prevent any improper use being made of this discharge by its falling into other hands, the following is a description of the said Thomas Crystal. He is about 31 years of age, 5 foot 3 inches in height, brown hair, grey eyes, dark complexion, and by trade and occupation, a shoemaker. His conduct was described as being good, and that he'd served in the campaigns from Zealand to Walcheren, the peninsula in the south of France, and lastly was at Waterloo, and that in consequence of being worn out, he is hereby discharged. The regiment had just returned from France, uh, having been part of the Army of Occupation until the end of October 1818, and a week after landing in England, the process of discharging him began. He was awarded the permanent pension on the 25th of February 1819. Given that he was relatively young, this suggests that he truly was worn out from service, and there is one year uh, which is not listed in his peninsula campaigning, which suggests that he may have been wounded or suffering from disease. By 1830, he was living in Port Leith, just outside of Edinburgh, and was working again as a shoemaker. 
He survives until 1848 and applied for and received his Military General Service Medal with five clasps for Corona, Bosaco, Fuentes de Noro, Salamanca and Toulouse. He had seen a great deal of action. In the 1841 census, he was 50 years of age and was living at 2 Spence's Place, St Cuthbert's Parish in Edinburgh. Above him in the census return is Jean Donaldson, who was presumably the house owner. And he lived there with his wife, Agnes Crystal, who was aged 35. He'd married her in 1840. There are no children listed in the census return. He died on the 28th of July, 1849, still living in Spence's Place, and was buried in St Cuthbert Cemetery, Edinburgh. His medals still exist, though they are not themselves his original medals. We know this as the edges on which the recipient's rank, name and regiment are stamped have been filed down and re-stamped. In their original state, they should have had a serrated edge, given an effect rather like that of a modern piece of corrugated cardboard. Onto this, the recipient's details would be stamped. Close up on the MGS medal, which has the five major clasps for which Thomas participated, there is evidence of the original recipient's details. The Waterloo Medal also has a notch cut into the lower edge, suggesting that this medal had, on several occasions, rubbed up repeatedly against another hard metal edge. But together, they make a fascinating duo.